I'm going to be introducing the wonderful Karen Nussbaum, who's really so collaborative. And, you know, we do have this, this tradition that there's not a whole lot of, we don't do a whole lot of introduction and we have people introduce themselves. But I will tell you that um, she is the founding director of Working America, which I think means that she founded it, basically. She probably had some help. Uh, she's still on the board, and but one of the, her own particular interests right now is focusing on the volunteer part because they have a big staff that goes out and does what they do, but she focuses on that. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to Karen. Thank you so much, Jim, and thank all of you. You've got a fantastic organization. We are so impressed with what you do, um, and we're so thrilled that you want to do some of that with us because uh, uh, we know we're working with a group that really does its homework and produces like crazy. So that's uh, thrilling for us. Um, uh, I did, um, I helped start Working America because I'm in the labor movement. It was actually John Sweeney, the president of the AFL-CIO who founded Working America, but uh, I helped put it together and um, I am so glad that I had that opportunity because I think that for me at least, this work of, of um, building a, a, a home for working class people where they can get good information, feel some agency and uh, not, you know, not listen to the siren song of the right wing um, is uh, so important and so necessary and effective. So um, uh, I'm just going to take a few minutes to explain what we do at Working America and what the volunteer program looks like right now. Um, we started Working America in 2003. Uh, it's a project, a, an organization that's affiliated with the AFL-CIO. Um, I was at the AFL-CIO and we could see what being a union member meant for those working people. And it meant that they had both a, a sense that you could do something about economic issues and they were getting good information from a trusted messenger, their union. And it meant that union members were voting, even though a lot of them were white working class uh, uh, folks, they were voting two thirds, sometimes three quarters for the union endorsed candidates, Democrats. But their neighbors were not. Their neighbors were being um, uh, swept up in right wing, the right wing social agenda. And so we decided that we would try to do our best to reach those people, interrupt their normal um, source of information and, and give them a different path. So we started a door to door canvas in 2003 that goes door to door, skipping the doors of union members in working class neighborhoods talking to everybody um, and it goes year round uh, and talking to them about issues, not politics, uh, asking them what's the most important thing to you and your family when you think about uh, your future, your the, the economy and so on. And we get into a conversation with people that interrupts the, the um, Fox News, which has happened, you know, going on uh, just beyond the screen door in, in so many cases. Uh, we talk to them about issues. We say, you know, the problem is that big corporations have so much influence over our government and our economy, and that the best solution is to join together to have strength in numbers. So we'd like you to join tonight as a member of Working America, and you can take this action right away to expand Medicaid in the state, to preserve the public schools, to um, you know, pass a law about uh, collective bargaining, whatever it is, two out of three people we talk to, they're strangers, sign up as a member of Working America. They take an action and then they continue to hear from us forever. Uh, and then when it is time for an election, we come back, we talk to them again, and we say, oh, Jim, you know, I, I talked to you in April and you said retirement was your most important issue. Well, let me tell you where the candidates stand, stand on retirement. Um, that works enormously well. It, it means that from the beginning, we were beginning to, we, we get the numbers that unions get from their members. And we were beginning to bump up uh, no matter who they were, whether they were white, uh, working class, gun owning, church going people, 
we could move them, our persuasion rates were right uh, at the very top. Um, uh, and it's because we uh, give them a sense of agency that they can change their priority. If you can do something about the economy, then they'll vote for someone who's talking about the economy, as opposed to someone who's talking about gun, gun owning. Um, we uh, give them information because they've opted in as a member, they get our information all the time. And then when we come back with um, information about candidates, they listen. 90% of our members don't belong to any other progressive organization. We've done the, our match lists um, and it makes this big difference. So today we have three and a half million members um, in battleground states for the most part. We uh, talk to them at the doors, but during the pandemic, we also develop very effective tools in text and phone and, um, and, and uh, personalized letters, which I'll talk about in a minute. We've got the best persuasion rates in the country and especially among our members, but we also look at our members and then model people who look like them so that we're persuading them as well. From just to give you a couple of examples, from 2016 to 2020, working America members moved. They changed their votes for, to move to our candidates by over 12 percentage points, where the public moved just over one point. So it's an astonishing um, effect. Uh, and the cost per vote is, is the best in the country as well. So that um, if you looked at um, uh, 2020, again, the average, if you looked at campaigns and super PACs, the average cost per one vote was 750 to $1,000. For a working America member, it's $50 to pick up a vote. And if, and if it's Work in America doing the work and they're not a member, it's $150. There's about a three, uh, three times more likely to move a member. So what are we doing now? In 2022, we're working in nine states, um, Arizona, Georgia, Minnesota, mo and most importantly to you all, North Carolina and Pennsylvania, we already have Canvas operations up and running. We'll be starting in Michigan soon and we'll also run programs in Ohio and Wisconsin. We're going to recruit up to a million new members because we know that membership is the key to a, both a long-term effect and to these high persuasion rates. And we're starting that uh, both with our professional canvas, but our volunteer activities right now are starting with a phone bank um, to people who, who we say have been warmed. These are people who have, they're, they're targeted voters who have responded to Working America in the past to a text, to a phone call. So, so they're not your usual angry phone bank recipients. And, um, and we're talking to them about dignity at work. We're not talking about candidates. Um, we're asking them, you know, have you heard about these recent problems like Amazon workers who don't even have time to use a bathroom or the, the factory workers who had to sit in their factory instead of finding safety during a hurricane? What does dignity at work mean to you? And I just did these phone bank calls um, uh, recently and they are really good. People are super nice. They wanna talk about it. Um, and uh, I'll give you just one example, a woman named Cherie, who said she almost quit her last job because of issues around dignity and respect. She said she had a supervisor who would rail at people in front of their coworkers when it was, wasn't even warranted, um, that she thinks that it is time we do something about it so that she's happy to send a letter to Senator Cinema to ask her to support the Protect the Right to Organize Act, the PRO Act, and she signed up as a member. This is all in a, you know, 10 minute phone call, five, five to 10 minute phone call. And Sheree agreed to contact four or five of her friends and get them to write letters to Senator Cinema as well. Um, the, we're doing that as a way to recruit some of these 1 million new members in targeted states among targeted voters. Um, they're rewarding phone calls, which I know is uh, almost an oxymoron <laughs> that a phone bank could feel rewarding. 
but it, it's a pretty good experience. Next month, we're going to um, start what we call a front porch focus group, but it really be phone calls to talk to people about climate. Uh, we think uh, we've got this long-term problem. Lots of working class people don't prioritize climate because they've got so many more immediate pressing problems. So we want to, as volunteers, have longer conversations with people about climate. What does it mean to them? When does it uh, seem like it's important? So that we begin to build a better understanding and over the course of the next year and a half, develop a program and a message that speaks to working people about uh, climate change. And then in April, we'll begin our letter writing. We write personalized letters, but you print them. You don't have to handwrite them all, um, but they speak from my heart to the person that I'm talking to about an economic issue that we know, we've already tested and know that it's gonna be effective uh, to targeted voters uh, in battleground states. The letters don't mention candidates. They talk about the issue. And what we found is that it helps prioritize for people uh, that issue over issues like immigration um, or whatever else is driving them to the Republicans and, and the right wing. Uh, our numbers on this are extraordinarily good that you spend an hour and a half writing 100 letters and you, you change two or three votes. That's better than you're gonna do on the doors. It, it's a really high re return. Um, and we also know that the effect of sending a letter on an issue lasts for the, through the year, at least for the six months, unlike letters that are about the candidates, which really have a very short shelf life and only work at the end of a campaign. So that's what we're doing. We'd love to have you all participate um, in any part of it or all parts of it. We will be on the doors with volunteer canvases uh, at the beginning, uh, I, in early April, I expect, uh, in Pennsylvania. And we'd love to work with your organization to, um, to, do a, a, to put together the best possible volunteer program that will work side by side with our professional program to reach the very people we need to. So again, thank you for giving me this time. And if you've got any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Um, we have some time for a uh, couple of questions. If anybody wants to um, raise their hand or just unmute yourself. Um, hard for me to see everybody. So unmute yourself if you have a question or put it in the chat. Uh, Hi. <laughs> so it's 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 Terry Dances, uh, and, and I've actually been a, a member of Working America for uh, years. But um, my uh, question is: uh, Do you have some economic questions that, that you're asking that that are related to to, to the uh, economic consequences of of COVID? Oh yeah, we, we actually worked a lot on COVID during the pandemic, especially. Um, we would engage people um, by giving them good information about wearing a mask or where to find COVID resources, uh, because it's a way to say, this is something you're worried about. How do we um, connect you to us? Um, and then I think the, the Dignity at Work campaign is tied to the economic consequences of COVID and um, uh, trying to pass the PRO Act uh, has, it reaches people in some of the new problems that they're having because of the pandemic. And then finally, we also work with unions on some of their organizing campaigns. Uh, and we can put our members into support either on the consumer side or on the worker side. So I guess I'm, I'm especially concerned about people who have lost jobs as a as a as a side effect of of covid well we did a wonderful campaign in pennsylvania on unemployment insurance uh, where we focused on black workers who had lost their jobs because they're so underserved by the unemployment system 
Uh, and what we did was we reached out to people and had them become effectively community activists. Uh, we talked to them about their own unemployment and then whether they had three or four friends that were also unemployed. One example is a woman named Crystal in Philadelphia who lost her job, had five friends who met every week um, and did a tailgate party during the middle of the pandemic. She got information from us. She gave it to all of her friends. They all successfully got unemployment insurance. Uh, and we did that with, and we got 30,000 uh, 30, local activists who reached out to their friends, 10,000 specifically on, um, on uh, unemployment insurance. And they res it resulted in $170 million in benefits that they wouldn't have received otherwise. So it's a powerful, real effect on people's lives. It makes them feel attached to the organization and it's building these networks of unlikely activists with their own friends. And then they, uh, then those activists talk to their friends about politics as well. We have a goal of having 100,000 community activists who you build around those basic economic issues, getting the child tax credit, getting the um, uh, unemployment insurance, uh, other basic benefits that a lot of people are losing out on, uh, and then having that create a, a permanent um, infrastructure in those communities. Thank you. Um, there's one question in the chat. I wasn't, I'm not sure, Catherine, what your question is. She just wants a little bit more information about what kind of door knocking you're going to be doing. Yeah, we do um, what people often think about as deep canvassing. We uh, um, go to doors in working class communities. We'll have highly targeted, refined lists of who we're talking to. Uh, well, actually in April, in the spring, we'll still be recruiting members. Um, and uh, and that's a great experience. You know, you just get to talk to people about their priority issues and why strength in numbers is important. And they sign up. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, we have professional teams in these cities, and they'll train us. Um, we will also, as a volunteer group, figure out what kind of training we think is important. We'll be working with a professional. Uh, leadership team, uh, and we may even go out with, you know, in pairs with uh, the uh, paid canvassers until we get our, uh, you know, sea legs, uh, and then we'll be able to design a program that that continues to, to bring us back into those communities, recruiting members, and we'll be recruiting members um, uh, through uh, probably the middle of the summer, towards the end of the summer, and then we'll start um, voter contact. So, okay. Mm, Thank is, there, is there an overlap in like the area, the region and the state that you're focusing on with uh, the areas that Jim just described as being um, contested, competitive? Yeah, we've talked with Jim and Michael about um, whether, we're, uh, whether we can try to uh, create a program that specifically hits that region. And so we're, we're in discussion to make sure that we can make it as, as uh, meet your interests and also make it a, a drivable experience. So, you know, it's not too far. But, but, but even independent of us, you're, you're gonna have priority for that area around Philadelphia and Northwood. Yes. And you're also gonna have priority around Pittsburgh. Yeah, we're gonna have a huge operation in the state and it's, uh, and it's in those same, kinds of districts that Jim is talking about. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we do persuasion. And that's often in white working class communities, but not exclusively. So in uh, Philadelphia, we've got lots of work that's in black communities where people often just don't turn out to vote. And in the midterms, that's gonna be a, a very big issue. In a state like Arizona, where you've got a big, um, uh, Latino population, I think about 20% of our um, targets are Latinos. And that's a group that's really, you know, got cross currents moving. Uh, and so persuasion is going to be really important. Wonderful. So I'm going to take one more question. Ann Kalman has your, your hand up. Um, I'm following up on Jerry. Have you found a way 
to talk to people about inflation in a positive manner, because that's something that's really scaring people. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that, and and um, about whether we've been hearing that at the door very much and what our response is, but I will find out and I'll let Jim know and we can get it back to you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much, Karen, for just giving your time. We are going to be hearing in a minute from Michael Friedman, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about how 31st Streeters can get involved and help Working America.